Folks, thank you very much for joining us. This is Liliana Gutierrez in the enablement team. And you may have had a chance to listen to the elevator pitch. This is a little bit more detail for you in an introduction to Power AI. As you know, if you did have a chance to do the short version, uh, we're talking about deep learning, we're talking about AI, and we're talking about teaching the computer to learn, and the work and the solutions that we have announced. Scott Suter, who's the offering manager for Power AI and H um, High Performance Data Analytics, will be talking to you about the world's fastest AI platform for enterprise and all about our power solution. Scott, without further ado, thank you so much. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to, to, to speak to the team today. My name is Scott Suter. I am part of our IBM Power Systems uh, brand team. I am an offering manager for both uh, Power AI and High Performance Data Analytics. IBM recently launched Power AI as an entry to the very fast growing and very exciting uh, se solution segment of deep learning. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes giving a background of what is deep learning and contrast that to AI and traditional machine learning and then dig into, uh, dig into the offering itself, talk a little bit about what goes into Power AI, why we designed it the way that we did, um, and then really uh, invite you to learn more on how to get started with this offering. To get started, what I'd like to do is speak a little bit about what deep learning is, where it fits into the broad category of artificial intelligence, and then really go a little bit more into some of the elements of the solution so we can better describe what Power AI is and why it's such an exciting offering today. Probably the broadest category within the, the space of machine intelligence is this idea of artificial intelligence. It is very exciting, but it's also a little bit ill-defined. And so really to start looking at functional definitions and to start getting a better idea of how we actually apply some of these technologies in the enterprise, I like to drill down and talk about three concentric circles. The broadest is that somewhat ill-defined idea of artificial intelligence, but inside of artificial intelligence is a very functionally powerful uh, set of techniques called machine learning. Within machine learning, we as humans and as programmers help develop and, and create algorithms that allow a computer or machine to look into vast amounts of data and find some of the intelligence and, and, the, uh, and the key information within those, those data sets. Uh, machine learning has been a very powerful force in computing and in data science in the past decade, decade and a half. And as we move into a new area called deep learning, we're really seeing an evolution of, of what has been traditional machine learning. Now the difference between machine learning and deep learning really is in how the algorithm and how the development of the program occurs. Within deep learning, we really train the computer to learn. And this is sort of the, the, the critical concept here. Within deep learning, we utilize software tools that allow us to build a foundation of logic, build a foundation of data sets uh, that a computer, a system can then uh, take in and based on the rapid, rapid and, and, and uh, significant training with large data sets, help to write its own algorithm to find and recognize patterns in data or recognize characteristics uh, of, of individual data points that, uh, that come up in a system. A classic machine and deep learning example is image categorization and recognition, where through the use of a initially tagged data set, we teach a computer how to recognize what an image might be. We see this applied today in technologies such as Google Photos, but also in automated, automated image tagging and uh, recognition that may help find characteristics of uh, what sits within a picture, um, either uh, in a video format or, or still picture. Deep learning is composed of two elements. There is a training piece where we teach the computer how to build an algorithm, and then an inference piece, uh, which is really closer out to the edge, and this is the part of the deep learning system that actually acts on the algorithm. Another classical deep learning example, which I think illustrates this very well, is the idea of a driverless car. 
we teach a car how to drive in the data center. We teach a car how to drive by applying observational data and real world data. And that system, that deep learning system, helps develop an algorithm, an equation that can be run out within a car out in the field. Now, the difference is really in scale. On the training side, it's a very compute intensive, it's a very data intensive process. Uh, there isn't room within the average car for a data center. So we need to be able to build something that can be executed uh, closer to the edge with typically a much smaller power footprint and a much smaller physical footprint. Training and inference. Training within deep, deep learning is really, we call it neural inspired because it draws from our understanding of how the mind works. The idea that artificially within a deep learning system we can create neural connections and weighting of connections by applying millions and millions of data points to the system. And it's really this repetition, this repetition of tagged imagery and then unsupervised imagery in the case of image recognition or language sets in the case of natural language processing that helps build that weighting connection and therefore the precision, the, the accuracy of the algorithm. To help facilitate this, we really need a platform and within our Power AI platform, this is composed of, of three elements. There are the deep learning frameworks themselves. These are the logical tools that help create these artificial neural networks and, and output the algorithm that, uh, that we use for inference. These are supported by uh, mathematical libraries that, that really take advantage of the capabilities of very strong compute. And in the case of compute, this really is an acceleration play. In the last three years, we've seen a renaissance and, and really a rise in deep learning because um, members of an open source community members of uh, industry and academia and research have really focused on ways to accelerate the code through the application of GPUs. And that works well um, because there's tremendous amounts of compute power and it works even better on the IBM offering because we provide extreme bandwidth to help feed those GPUs, give them the data that they need in order to process at speed. The desired outcome why we're doing this. Deep learning builds very, very precise systems of inference. We're now at the point where uh, deep learning systems can train to a level of accuracy that is approaching or even greater than what we as people can do in things such as recognition, natural language processing, real-time trans translation, or other interpretation of data patterns. And we're seeing this really as a renaissance because members of the technology computing are using these deep learning technologies as a way to reprocess existing data sets to find a more efficient way to uh, develop an algorithm to develop this inference, find a more efficient way to, to handle data. IBM recently announced our offering in the deep learning space called Power AI, and this is a tremendously exciting place to be. For the past 10 years, IBM has done a very good job of talking about cognitive computing in terms of Watson, which is an excellent offering that provides machine learning and deep learning technologies available as an API to our clients. However, in the last couple of years, there has also been a significant renaissance in deep learning technologies that have been developed by members of the academic community, members of the research community, and large organizational entities and, and internet companies. These open source deep learning projects, these open source deep learning frameworks and algorithms have created a, a, an environment with tremendous growth. We've seen this segment growing at 70, nearly 70% 70 compounded annual growth rate uh, year to year. And we've seen a lot of exciting and rapid adoption of the technologies as I mentioned previously. One of the things though that has stood in the way of this rapid adoption has been the complexity. The software codes are uh, complex, there are significant interdependencies, and there really isn't a, a, a strong enterprise level of support. This has stood in the way of a lot of organizations being able to adopt and, and really rapidly deploy these technologies. To address this concern, IBM is 
very happy to have launched and, and announced our offering called Power AI. Power AI is a package of pre-compiled major deep learning frameworks that are offered in binary format. It's a single image. It's about a two-command install. And while it may have taken us a couple of weeks when we initially got started to build our first uh, and second frameworks, we've really worked on the uh, design and the simplicity of our installation. We've now brought this down to something that can be done in under one hour. Uh, simple to install, very easy to get started. After that one hour install, you have a working uh, system ready to begin training against deep learning data sets. Really the advantage here, um, we're looking at two ways that we have helped embrace and extend this very active and exciting community of deep learning uh, developers and, and applications. The first is we started to optimize uh, for performance on IBM's accelerated computing systems. NVLink, the technology that connects our GPUs, CPUs, and system memory, uh, provides extreme bandwidth to the GPU. And in very data-centric, very, uh, very data-intensive applications, such as deep learning training, this acceleration makes a substantial difference in the overall performance of, of the system as a whole. The second thing that we've introduced with Power AI is we are starting to expand and enhance the functionality and the capability of these neural networks. So we optimize for system performance. We're also working through our collaboration with the IBM research teams to help extend the functionality and the overall capability of neural networks. More on this in just a minute. Power AI itself is composed of these deep learning frameworks, and what you'll see on this page are really some of the most popular and prevalent frameworks that are out there, um, spanning, things, spanning technologies such as image tagging and recognition, natural language processing, or data analytics, uh, systems that look at large data sets and look for patterns or anomalies. These frameworks are what build that artificial neural network and build that algorithm that can be used to run as a system of inference out towards the edge. These are supported by open source uh, mathematical acceleration libraries as well as tools such as digits that help make the frameworks easier to use, provide a more intuitive interface. And they all run on top of IBM's foundation of accelerated system, uh, systems, the IBM SA22LC for HPC, and other supporting infrastructure, such as our high-speed parallel file system, Spectrum Scale. And these systems run equally well in the cloud, be it public or private, or within the client's data center. At the core reason that Power AI is, is so exciting, the core reason Power AI is so exciting really is that internal system bandwidth. These applications, these deep learning frameworks, are very data intensive and they rely heavily on GPU to GPU communication and they also rely very heavily on CPU, to, uh, CPU and system memory to GPU communication. The critical piece here is being able to, when you're training against a large data set, very quickly bring data down from system memory into the GPU where it can be acted upon. And there is no system out there quite like the IBM SA22LC for HPC. We have two and a half times the bandwidth between the CPU and the GPU and significantly higher bandwidth between GPU and GPU. These systems thrive on acceleration and our overall performance thrives on the, the capability of the SentiLink technology. It really is the enabling technology for deep learning in the enterprise and it also represents what I think is one of the most powerful opportunities for innovation today. That capability of not being limited anymore by the amount of memory that sits on a GPU. Uh, but instead being able to take advantage of the very high-speed connection between GPU and system memory, training against larger data sets, and getting to a more precise result. Across industries, we're seeing substantial benefits of Power AI at any interface, any system, any set of technologies which require a better, better way for clients to connect with a computer system. We get a better understanding of client perspectives, we can give more accurate recommendations, 
understanding clients' motivations, and improve the overall interaction with the system. We can do this through the use of intelligent agents, which rely on uh, artificial intelligence technologies. We can use this through improved human-to-system communication, through natural language processing or real-time translation. All of these are enabled by Power AI. For IT executives, we've brought simplicity of installation, and we are bringing enterprise support to this environment. This is an industry first. We'll be offering level one through level three support for Power AI to clients, uh, knowing that this technology is becoming critical and will become more and more central to how clients' environments work. Having this level of system uh, support will really ease our customers' ability to, to comfortably deploy it into critical, mission-critical uh, environments. And for scientists and developers, uh, as I mentioned, NVLink is really a, a breakthrough technology by using it, by, by taking advantage of the capability that NVLink opens up for intrasystem com, uh, communication. We have the capability to give faster access to large memory, which means the ability to train a larger data set, train a more complex model um, to improve and, and get to a higher level of accuracy. Power AI is available today. We announced it in November and made it available to every client free of charge who has an accelerated power system from IBM. You can download Power AI, run that two command install, and be up and running within 45 minutes. We highly recommend a SA22 LC for HPC server with the P100 GPUs. Um, however, this will also run on uh, the prior generation of accelerated HPC nodes, the SA22 with the K80 GPUs. If you don't have either of this system or you're looking for a way to quickly be up and running, we have the opportunity to try out Power AI today on IBM's HPC cloud partner, Nimbix's Jarvis system. You can see the link down below, power.jarvis.com. That will take you to a uh, enterprise HPC cloud system that is available to run the IBM CAFE framework. You can be up and running on deep learning within minutes, not even that 45 minutes, but five minutes. I invite you to get started with this. I also invite you to give me a call, contact me, um, email, same time. I'm very excited to answer any questions and, and give, more, uh, give more background on Power AI. Thank you very much for your time. Great job, Scott. Really interesting to hear where we are with certainly technology that's becoming critical, the benefits that we have for our customers across industry, and the kind of support that we have as part of Power AI. Thank you very much, and thanks, folks, for listening.